dedicated garage or shop wasn't on my main list of criteria when buying this house. It was a secondary objective. But here we are, and I've been contemplating the addition of a garage now. I decided, though, rather than drop $15,000 or more on a garage I could go a couple weeks at a time without using, I'd start by making our current two-stall garage into a fold-out shop and supplement that with a large tool room in the basement. A place where we can simply park outside and in a few minutes I can get ready to start something new. A key element to this is of course a workbench. One that needs to be quickly foldable, extremely sturdy, light enough to handle regularly, and not be too expensive because it's just a workbench. Before I go over the specs and decision making, I'll just say that this thing is a rock and I'm really pleased with its function, especially with the cost and simplicity considered. As you'll see, I'm not exactly a small guy and I can practically jump around on this thing. For the surface, I went with two half inch sheets of plywood. It's easier to carry and even more rigid, glued and screwed with construction adhesive. I nearly went with full 4x8 sheets but did rip off about 8 inches. Uh, you can see this fixed to the bottom of the uh, bench surface here for extra strength. For folding hinges, I went with 4 inch zinc plated heavy strap hinges and I used 5 of those. I mounted a 2x4 to the studs and sunk that in with 3 inch screws and a little adhesive. I decided a bench height of 37 and a half inches was ideal for me at 6 foot 1 inches tall. The legs are where things get tricky for a foldable bench. I watched a lot of other videos and really wasn't too impressed. Some even looked quite dangerous. For attached legs, it was leaning towards using removable bolts or pretty expensive hinges as the legs need to hold a lot of weight and offer no sway. That would be expensive hinges. After some thought, I decided hardware free, easily removable legs was the best decision and the best cost. I love when that works out. The top of the leg tee is 20 inches wide. I lock in the two 2x4 two legs with short 2x4 sides. That's plenty of width to never tip and it spreads the weight of the bench out plenty. To fix the legs with the bench, I decided to simply add a track. The legs fit snug between the front edge and the added 2x4 length to create a track. You just need to be sure when doing this that the leg tops are smooth and flat, and when installing the track slot that you have it pressed snugly but not tight. So it's still easy to put the legs in, but it's not sloppy. Once fixed and the glue dries, it's never moving. You can see to achieve a deep work surface and still be able to fold it down so the wall remained usable, it was cut close but there's still enough room to the floor that no moisture will damage the bench. I also mark the legs so they always get the same track and direction and the original fit isn't compromised. Once the legs are in, simply square them up with a tap of a foot and the bench is a beast. You can see that the bench takes only seconds to put up and down. For my typical uses, it will often be to work with wood, so a hard surface or bench top isn't crucial for me. I might paint it eventually, but you can use countertop laminate, paint, or a steel sheet or even get a piece of linoleum flooring like this. A roll is really handy to have as it protects your bench as well as your projects by being durable yet soft on wood. You can see it folds up snug against the wall and still allows for maximum parking space. Still a little bit bummed about getting rid of my truck, but a growing family comes first. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a safer, faster, more sturdy and affordable folding workbench than something similar to this. I hope this has been another video that helps someone out there. YouTube is a great learning tool, so I'm pleased to share back.